Welcome to Today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are so happy, 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 happy to have time with you. And you know, we have a special guest today. He has a book written called Why Am I Not Healed by Pastor Glenn Berto. Oh my goodness. Have you ever asked that question? Why don't I get healed? How come I prayed? I did a da, 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 and I'm not healed. Why? Well, <laughs> that's why you want to watch this program and interview because God's going to help you really see some very significant keys for healing. And mom, what's a testimony to encourage us for well, healing in our faith? I love this. This is Patrick's dad got COVID and was out of work for a week. He did not have vacation time. He needed to pay his bill. And when he picked up his check, he had a bonus of $1,500. Awesome. That's totally cool. And you know, I love how God answers so many different prayers. He we does. have needs in terms of finances, needs in terms of health, some family issues. You just saw that too. This testimony encourages you in a lot of different ways, a lot of key areas, family needs, financial needs, health needs, and just even faith, stirring up your faith and encouraging your faith. So whatever the needs are in your life, make sure you hop on the phone, get on the website. We love to pray for you. And we know that God answers prayer. And partners, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for being so consistent, so steady for your prayers, for your finances. Mm -hmm. You're an integral piece of this ministry and helping us to cover the earth with the word and connect everyone to the heart of God. We're going to join this interview now with Pastor Glenn Berto. Why am I not healed? And again, I want to just encourage you. A lot of times we think, you know, well, it's not God's will or, you know, the devil did this. And there are really key things to why we don't receive healing. And sometimes when we get those keys, then it's like the lever to launch into healing. So watch this interview now. In parts of Asia, babies and toddlers growing up in the sex industry do not have safe childhoods. Instead, they are left on the streets abused and neglected while their mothers work. They have nowhere safe to go. You can change this. Nightcare provides a safe place for these babies and toddlers where they are loved and cared for. Every night at the center, they are given a nutritious meal, toys to play with, and a safe place to sleep. Help us provide safe childhoods for these babies and toddlers. Help us protect babies and toddlers from the horrors of the sex industry. $38 protects one baby for one month. Donate now by calling 800-627-1995. Hey there, welcome to Today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are so happy to have you with us. And I want to introduce to you our guest, Pastor Glenn Berto. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you, you and be you. here with you. Totally I'm so good. excited about today. Yeah, and, and Pastor Glenn, not everybody knows who you are. Yeah. You know, um, we had some fun banter <laughs> behind the camera, but can you give us a little bit of background? And, and I really want to hop into your book, Why Am I Not Healed? Yeah. So well, good. Well, I've been, I've been probably in ministry about 48, 49 years. I've spent the last 30 years in Modesto, California. And uh, it was called Calvary Temple back then. It's called The House Now. And back then, I'm, I need to talk about Marilyn here because Marilyn came to our church years ago. We were finally able to get Marilyn because you couldn't get her because she was just so busy. And, but we've all, we wanted to have you come. We were in the pastor's lounge. I know you don't remember this, but I remember the story and I still do what you've told me to do. I was traveling all over the world and I was going to do these conferences. I'm in Malaysia, I'm in Singapore, I'm in Australia, New Zealand. I'm in the pastor's lounge and I asked you, I said, Marilyn, are you still traveling around the world? You said, yes, I'm still traveling. About 50% of the time I'm gone. I said, every time I go, I get sick. I said, I, I just, I, I, it's like the devil just makes me sick and I just, I, I just have to push through it. I said, do you ever get sick? No, I don't get sick. I said, well, what do you do? Well, I just lay my hands on my head and I just pray. I don't have time for this devil. I've got to preach. And I, then I said, well, can I use your hands then? Because mine don't work. But, I, <laughs> but what happened is, is I started doing that yeah. and started saying, you know what? I'm going to lay hands on my head. Marilyn says to do this, and I would be healed. And then this book here, uh, 
where I, I, I'll talk about it, but where I died and I came out of it, I still will lay hands and I said, Lord, I'm going to feel better tomorrow morning than I did, you know, and you taught me that. And uh, I use that in my messages here. When you can't find a conference, you can't find your pastor, you can't find it. You don't need to lay hands on yourself and tell the devil his request has been denied to take authority. So you, you taught me something powerful in my life. Well, and so I, I pastored uh, in Modesto for the last 30 years. We've got churches in uh, different parts of the country. My kids are all in ministry, thank God. I'm the first one in my family to have been saved. No one in my family, cousins, uncles, aunts, mom and dad was Christian. I never seen a Bible till I was saved at 21 years of age. And uh, it's amazing how God chooses the unqualified. And uh, just like the disciples, they weren't, they, weren't, they weren't Bible school students. And God just basically chose me, threw me on my carpet in my dormitory room on the ground with the guy. I don't know, Marilyn, if you know Denny Duran. Yeah. Denny Duran was a quarterback. I was a running back on the football team. Yeah. And Denny was there. And God took me by my neck. And I was and threw me on my carpet and told me to pray. And so I said, Our Father who art in heaven, he says, No, no, he didn't know another prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with. <laughs> he said, No, you know another prayer. I said, No, I can't remember the one I was supposed to memorize. He said, Well, just say, just ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. Uh, I prayed that simple prayer. 21 years, when the Bible says weights, it was a weight. I didn't know I had it, but it lifted off of me, I had tears coming out my eyes. And the first thing I said, that it's real, that this is not some joke that all that we're doing here, this is real. Jesus is real. And I was changed. And what's interesting is yesterday at 11.31 p.m., 50 years ago in room 201, Hutchison Dorm in Ruston, Louisiana, Yesterday is my 50th year of being saved, kneeling down in that dormitory. Mm. And my life has not been the same since all my children are in the ministry. My grandchildren are growing up on the front row of church and started a whole... See, people don't realize just one person can change the whole dynamics of your entire family. And yeah. so... I'm thrilled about that. And uh, you might be watching today and you might be struggling in your family with your family coming to know Jesus, your kids or your grandkids. And we'd love to pray for you, pray mm -hmm. for your family, that they would come to know Christ and have a vibrant relationship with Jesus. And I just encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website. We'd like to pray for you. And Glenn, you also wrote this book, Why Am I Not Healed? So why did you write it? <laughs> hey, this is going to be a good story here. I, I write this book. I wrote the book because as pastors, we all have people that are sick in our churches. We all have them. And it's confusing at times why we don't see anything take place and they, they're sick for long periods of time. And I said, God, I said, you know, what do we do here? I said, God said, I want you to write a book on it. And he said, there's 17 hindrances to your healing in the Bible. So that's in this book here. So I write this book, Why Am I Not Healed When God Promised, which is a question we all like, why? On the back is, how do you get your miracle? So what happens, I write this book and it's going to the printer. It's a, from Chosen Books and it's going to the printer. And as it, right before it gets printed, I have a cardiac arrest, died eight times and I'm brain dead instantly. We'll talk about that. And, and uh, of course, they didn't, they didn't print the book. They heard that the author died, and it wouldn't <laughs> sell good. Bad advertising. It oh, wouldn't oh, sell good. <laughs> Get Glenn's new book, Why Am I Not Healed? The New Miracle. He died He's yesterday. Dead. You will die too. No, it is. <laughs> it, it's not going to help anybody. And so, but what I didn't realize is that I wrote a book for me, that it was going to be my healing and my miracle. I was writing about what I needed in my own life. And of course, when I came back, they, they printed the book. This will help because what I have found out for everybody to know, when I've shared the story of what happened to me, every church I've done that in, there's over 50% of the people on Sunday morning that are sick and ill in your church. I didn't, I didn't even think that way 
before, but I see it now. The other that are sitting back that don't come forward have somebody in their house or somebody they know that's sick and needs a healing or needs a miracle. And so I realized that this, what God brought me through is what we've all seen miracles, but we have a whole generation that hadn't seen miracles. And so there was a purpose in me coming back to have an authentic resurrection is what I had. Uh, and that there's no explanation for it. They've done documentaries on it. They've done everything to, to doctors can't explain how I'm even talking to you right now and how my mind's even working and how I'm even breathing. Three cardiologists said, leave him alone. And so what happened is I'm preaching on Sunday three years ago. And I'm running around on stage, just feeling good, running, preaching around. And my wife is a, a Deborah is, a, is an intercessor. She's the prayer ministry, my wife. And before COVID, we have a thousand people on Monday night will come for prayer. And so just power, all these prayer leaders she's raised up. And so I wouldn't, sometimes I'm tired on Sunday, so I don't go on Monday. I'm just like, let me rest. And she goes, no, they're doing a birthday party for me, an early birthday party with the prayer leaders are. She goes, you need to come. And that was the only reason I came. If I didn't, she would have found me dead in a chair two and a half hours later when she got home. I'd have been dead in a chair. So I go up with her, drive all the way 30 minutes to church where I could have had a cardiac arrest driving and killed both of us. I go into the pastor's lounge. Her birthday's on the other side of a church. We've got a bit large facility, but it's to park over there is her birthday. But we're in the back here. We go in and she's kind of doing some things like this. She goes, okay, we got to go to the party. I walk out to the car and get in the car. She's a minute after me. And when she gets in the car, my head is back on the seat like this. And she hears me just do, and it just go. <sighs> and I was, I was dead. I was gone. And so she, uh, she started shaking. She said, Glenn, wake up, wake up. And she couldn't wake me up. Hmm. And then. I'll tell you the rest of the story. Yeah, we're going to like take yeah, a little pause lovely. here. This is like a cliffhanger, huh? And you're like, why are you? A he should keep going. Well, of course, we want you to call because I know that you have needs, physical, yeah. me medical issues in your body. You need healing. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. And of course, grab your copy. Why am I not healed? Because sometimes we have these questions. You're like, well, I've already been prayed for, so why would I want you? Well, then grab this copy of this book, Why Am I Not Healed? And in just a little few moments, we're going to come right back and find out. Clearly, he kind of came back to life, but we're going to kind of go a little bit of that journey and see what that was like to encourage your faith today. Marilyn and Sarah have been covering the earth with the word on television for over 50 years. But television isn't the only way their ministry can be viewed. Today with Marilyn and Sarah can be seen on platforms such as YouTube, Roku, Fire TV, as well as podcasts on iTunes and Google. It's easier than ever to be encouraged with God's work at home, work, or on the go. You can replay any program at any time. Tune in and be blessed. The most important thing you can do in your life is have a personal, deep connection, relationship with Jesus. You know, many of us, we've asked Jesus to come into our hearts in the past. Maybe you kind of need to make a reboot, a start over. Some of you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, come into your life. And this is the most important decision that you can make in your life. Please get on the phone. Give us the privilege and opportunity to pray with you for Jesus to come into your life. Is it God's will to heal? Is it God's will to heal you? For your gift of $40 or more, we will send you, Why Am I Not Healed? Through his own personal and family challenges, Pastor Glenn Berto breaks through misunderstandings regarding God's good intentions for his children. He shows how God can turn the worst into the best and use it for our benefit. We will also send you Sarah's In Step with the Spirit book, Marilyn's Move Your Mountain CD teaching, and our healing scripture card. For your gift of $100 or more, we will include our lovely healing Afghan. Filled with scriptures, this beautiful cotton throw will keep you warm and cover you with the healing word of God. Activate the faith you need to move mountains and be healed. Call or click today for this anointed resource. 
Welcome back. Now, Glenn, when we stopped for a break, you had just told us about your cardiac arrest. Yeah. Ooh, very serious. What happened next? Well, I think people need to understand cardiac arrest in a, a V-fib heartbeat is different than a heart attack. And so I've already had the Widowmaker. I already had that. I've got five stents in my heart. I have that. So heart issues are in my family in a sense. But I walked out to the car and as I was saying, and my head is leaning back like this. And Debbie starts shaking and said, come on, Glenn, wake up, quit playing around. She just saw me walk out. But it's instantly, it's a light switch. Cardiac arrest is a light switch. And I didn't know that, but, and so I'm, I'm gone. Ironically, what happens here is that we have a lady in our church who's a nurse practitioner. And we find out later she's a 25 year cardiac arrest nurse from oh. Canada, she just started coming to our church named Penny. She doesn't get there hardly at all, but she only came because Deb was having a birthday party. She parked on the wrong side, which was really the right side where my car was. She walks out. She hears Debbie saying, Glenn, wake up. She turns around said, and said, God told me, said, go help pastor. She said, I went immediately to your car. He said, I felt your neck. You have no pulse. Open your eyes. Your eyes are dilated. You're dead. You had a cardiac arrest. I know because this is what I deal with. I pulled you out of the car. Your legs are still on the seat. I started CPR. I broke all your ribs and I started giving you CPR. And she went five minutes. Now it's a prayer meeting. So now all the prayer people are coming up. So Debbie's intercessors come over to her and says, Debbie, it's a spirit of death. We've got to pray against the spirit of death is what it is. And so they started praying that she's gone for five minutes. And then she says, something happened that's never happened to me in 25 years. I said, well, what Penny? I said, the Lord says, take your hands off of him. So she said, I take my hands off of you. You opened your eyes, threw your hands up and you said, oh God. And you went back dead again. I said, well, have you ever seen that? He said, you don't have a pulse. I said, well, what did you think happened? She said, I felt like the Lord told me your spirit went back in your body. Don't stop. And don't let anybody stop. So she kept going for 15 minutes by herself, which is very hard to do CPR, one person. Then the paramedics get there. They went ahead and tried to revive me for 30 minutes. They would get a pulse back dead, a little bit of pulse back dead. Seven times that happened. The captain tried to get him to stop three times, said, let him leave him alone. We've been here long enough. He's not going to make it. Leave him alone. And Penny would not let them stop. So they finally got a light pulse the seventh time. They said, take him to the hospital. So it's right across the street from the church. They take me in and I die the eighth time in the emergency room. So I'm in the emergency room. I'm in the last place for them to even help because I'm gone. It's already been 45 minutes. Uh, now I have brain damage. Uh, I'm, I, I've been dead for f over 45 minutes. And there's just no hope. So we're not going to do anything. We're not going to hook him up to anything. Then there's a guy named Juan. His name is Juan. And he's a travel nurse. Here's another side story. And Juan is walking. He, he's two hours away. He's walking down the mercy room. And he sees my name. And I talked to him later and I got the story from him. He said, so I would go in your room and I would sing worship songs to you. And your pulse would move when I would sing a worship song. And then I would have to leave. And then I'd come back and do it. I said, well, Juan, how do you know? Do you know me? He goes, yeah, you came to Fresno 10 years ago and you were preaching and you pointed to me 10 years ago and says, you need to give your life to the Lord. And that was me. And I came forward and he said, you're called to be a worship leader. And he goes, I'm a worship leader now in my church. And you led me to the Lord. Oh. And he said, he's prayed. So he'd come in and pray. They didn't do anything. They just left me there. Two hours later, they, my doctor, who's in my church, and, and Debbie and them come to see me. My body had already turned blue. I was already basically dead. My doctor says, uh, on, he said on camera, he said, as a Christian, I believe that God can heal and do anything. But as a doctor, he's dead. And the doctor came out and told Debbie, he said, he's not, he's not going to live. He's just not going to live. If he lives, he has no quality of life because I was a three on a Glasgow coma scale. Anybody in the medical community knows it's brain damaged and you, your brain activity, you don't have much brain activity. So they finally, what happened is that they hooked me up to all, all these machines. Uh, I, I'm four deep in four blood pressure machines and so forth. They, they said there was more machines than they ever 
uh, put around somebody. Finally, when they got to it and realized maybe who I was or whatever, somebody had called them and said, I'm checking on him. And they started hooking me up. And so they'd had all this stuff in me. I don't know. I'm out. I'm gone. My kidneys are not working. My bladder's not working. My lungs are not working. Heart is not working. Uh, and they've got a ventilator. Uh, I'm, I'm paralyzed and I'm in a coma. I'm just laying there. My whole family gets called. Do they come? And they're praying against the spirit of death is what they're doing. On the third night, my wife calls someone and says, I don't want to let go of, of my husband. And, and they said, don't. And so she said, God, I need a word. Give me a word. So the, the fourth day, the Lazarus day, the fourth day, 530 in the morning, she gets wakened up by God saying, I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the resurrection and the life. And she wakes up out of a dead sleep and says, where, where the resurrection life? Where? That's Lazarus. That's Lazarus. Uh, that's John 11, 25. And John 11, 25 says, I'm the resurrection and life. If you believe, though you die, you will live. You cannot get a better scripture for <laughs> no. that. John 11, 25. I died on 11, 25. <sighs> November 25th is when I died. And so a picture that I have that they took is my head was turned like this. I'm paralyzed. I can't move or anything. And Debbie's talking to me and she said, you turned your head and you tried to open your eyes, although I don't remember it at all, but it was a sign to her that he's still there, that we need to keep believing and keep hoping. Hold on just a second. Cause I think <clears throat> there's some people in our audience watching and you're watching and you're like, man, my situation is hopeless. Yeah. I have not, everything's a dead end. There's no solutions, no answers, no life, no, no hope at all. And we want to pray for you. We want to pray that God would bring hope and resurrection into your life, into your situation, into your finances, into your medical conditions, into your relationships, whatever, that God would bring life and resurrection. So hop on the phone, get on the website, give us the opportunity to pray for you and as well, grab your copy of Why Am I Not Healed? So keep going then. What happened after that? Okay. Um, if they just continue praying. They continue praying and praying and praying uh, and uh Nothing had changed at all. Nothing, nothing in my body was working. And uh, what they eventually just said, said on, on the seventh day, the doctor says, we just got to take the ventilator out. So that was going to be the time to, that, okay, it's, it's, hope is gone. You know, he's going to die then. Now, what was happening for people, to, this is, this is going to be wild here, but I'm going to tell you what happens. I'm dead, but I still see things. Because my body is dead, but my spirit is not. And so during this time, the moment on the seventh day, I put all this together here. So yeah, bear with me on, on timing because I on timing. I got this right. I'm in a room. This is where I'm at. I'm dead, but I'm still seeing something. I, my spirit, I'm in, the, I'm in a pitch black room. People say, do you see Jesus? I didn't see Jesus. I went in a room of death is where I went. It was pitch black. And I could tell there was a door because I could see the outline of the door because there's a light on the other side of the door. There's a figure that's walking back and forth and I could see it blink when it walked, but I couldn't make out the shape. It's the feeling that the room is full. I know there's people in this room. I'm not the only one. You couldn't see a thing. All of a sudden, being from South Louisiana, I know what tornadoes and hurricanes sound like. And this powerful sound in a distance starts coming toward this room. And it's, it's just Oh, this powerful sound. And as it's coming, I'm trying to make out what is that sound? And as they got closer, it's people's voices. And as it got closer, people asked, can you hear? Yeah, I heard my wife praying. I heard my pastors praying. People I know around the world that were praying. And they were saying, spirit of death, you got to take your hands off of him and let him go. And all of a sudden, I felt 10 seconds later, this thing grabbed me and says, you got to get out of here now. And brought me to the door open, threw me out, and the ventilator comes out, and I started breathing. Wow. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. That's so powerful. That's completely, and to encourage your faith that God can absolutely bring resurrection out of what it seems to be 100% death. 
So let that story, let that, that whole experience from Pastor Glenn, let that encourage your heart and speak life into you where there's been death, where you've seen a spirit of death, where there's been absolute despondency and no hope and no life, no vitality. God can bring resurrection. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. Rebuke the spirit of death and see life spring forth in your life today. Is it God's will to heal? Is it God's will to heal you? For your gift of $40 or more, we will send you, Why Am I Not Healed? Through his own personal and family challenges, Pastor Glenn Berto breaks through misunderstandings regarding God's good intentions for his children. He shows how God can turn the worst into the best and use it for our benefit. We will also send you Sarah's In Step with the Spirit book, Marilyn's Move Your Mountain CD teaching, and our healing scripture card. For your gift of $100 or more, we will include our lovely healing Afghan. Filled with scriptures, this beautiful cotton throw will keep you warm and cover you with the healing word of God. Activate the faith you need to move mountains and be healed. Call or click today for this anointed resource. This has been a powerful interview. Glenn, would you pray for our audience? Absolutely, absolutely. Those of you that are dealing with sickness, dealing with illness, you have family members that have had a diagnosis that is not really looking good. We're going to believe for a miracle today. I want you to start by believing. The, 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 the word belief is the key element in everything. If you believe, is said over and over, by Jesus, if you believe. And so I want you to believe if God can do that for me, if what he did in my life and resurrect my life and gave me time with my family, he will do it for you. In the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of death. I command the spirit of infirmity. I command the spirit of sickness to leave right now in every home that it resides. And I pray a miracle right now where you are sitting, Right now, where you're at, receive it. Lay your hands right on your chest and say, God, he's talking to me and I receive that. And I agree and I'm in agreement with Pastor Glenn that if you can do it for him, you can do it for me. So I receive my miracle today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. So thanks be unto God who always, I love this. I say it every day leads us to triumph in Christ. And so today is your winning day. And today is my winning day. We don't give up. We don't give up. We don't know how to give up. We just know one thing. We're going to win. The last line, you're going to win. I'm going to win. <laughs>